as the draft inches closer, there's more and more speculation on the part of Ravens fans and NFL fans in general of what their team's plans will do, what Eric DaCosta and Ozzy Newsom will do in the first round, specifically at 14. The signing of Marcus Williams really crystallizes certain things for the Ravens that they did not have a free safety, a rangy guy who could protect and be almost a force multiplier uh, in terms of the pass game between the middle of the field and even the outer thirds. The presence of Brandon Stevens on the roster makes it really interesting because him and Chuck Clark kind of serve in the same role with strong safeties. I still think the Ravens are going to go corner at 14 or 45 or if they trade up into the mid-30s. Brandon Stevens put some good film out there last year, very reliable. This first set of plays is going to be man-to-man against primarily tight ends. He is a little limited in coverage the deeper he lines up, and I'll explain that further as we go along. This is a pick-rub concept by the Colts in Week 5. He's got the speed and acceleration to burst around this rub by the number 2 receiver, which makes it cut quite obvious from that angle. And then he's a good tackler in space. When he's asked to do things this close to the line of scrimmage, I think he's exceptional. He's a better athlete than most of the tight ends he's being asked to guard, even though he's given up size in some cases. Uh, here against Chicago on a fourth and one late in the game, there's going to be a sprint situation. He's guarding the outside man, which is the tight end. And again, they run a pick-rub concept. Now, him and Marlon Humphrey choose not to um, – exchange this or trade it off so what I mean is the number one receiver screens Humphrey and for whatever reason him and Stevens chose not to switch it off and I don't really blame a lot of the Ravens DBs in these situations like that because that was just the structure of the Ravens defense once they lined up in man they just played man here against the same tight end against the Bears you can see he's physical he probably gets away with a hold there but he's able to cover those guys well in space here's going to be multiple examples of Stevens covering tight ends last season mostly good examples with one bad Um, he does give up some separation here on these he's jamming this tight end to the inside and then as you get to see from the end zone angle there is a little bit of separation this tight tight ends able to get on this completed pass I do question whether he would be able to serve in this role against slot receivers the Ravens clearly preferred Tavon Young last year to Brandon Stevens to guard those kind of slot receivers and I would offer to you that they've got to find someone else like that in the draft or find an outside corner so they can slide Marvin Humphrey to the slot He does have a little bit of a habit to look in the backfield, to glance in the backfield at times. It hasn't hurt him on these short and intermediate routes that much. To be honest with you, there was twice that I saw in my film study where he was looking in the backfield and the route ended up being a deeper route and his posture kind of got broken down. But generally, pretty good coverage against tight ends, guys that, like I said earlier, he's a little bit better athlete than he's quicker than. Here's one example of a vertical route by a tight end for Cleveland. I think this is Njoku. And and his posture gets kind of broken down. He just doesn't turn his hips enough. Now, there is some contact that he's trying to make. This isn't catch man, though, but he's not able to turn his hips quick enough, and you can see he ends up getting beat pretty badly. There was a free safety there to cover it up, however. I think Stevens will only be better next year in this role guarding tight ends in the slot. A couple of examples that I saw of him guarding receivers in the slot. This is a late-in-the-game situation against the Steelers. I think third quarter, maybe their eighth possession, they're playing man. Uh, and Chuck Clark, who's lined up as the middle of the field free safety, vacates it to blitz, or maybe he's guarding the running back. But in any case, Stevens and Anthony Averett are both beat. Stevens has a little bit better coverage than Averett does, but they've got no help to the inside. Stevens isn't in poor relationship with this receiver. The ball could be delivered there, but you can see Chuck Clark vacating the middle of the field there, left Brandon Stevens and Anthony and Averett one-on-one with no help in the middle of the field. So they're going to be chasing. Each of them is beat just to a different degree. The one thing that I think Stevens has that Chuck Clark does not in terms of covering slot receivers is he does have the burst to recover, and I think he was showing it there near the end of the play. All right, one bad example on a play action. He's supposed to be guarding the tight end, Njoku, again. Njoku looks like he guards or blocks the front side inside linebacker. I think Steven's eyes get lost. You get a better view of it from the end zone here. I think his eyes get lost. He's looking for the football. And clearly Njoku and another tight end, which I think is Austin Hooper, both end up wide open. But there's there's the pseudo block by Njoku. Really, Queen just ran into him. And you can see Stevens has really lost him. He's not beat that badly from a physical standpoint. It's just from he's put himself out of position by letting his eyes not be disciplined for just a split second. And that's going to happen sometimes when you play the amount of snaps that Brandon Stevens did. Look, he's got the threat of the run action to him, the possibility of a screen back to the running back. So he had some eye candy to hold him to that side. But clearly Stevens lost track of his man there. Fortunately for the Ravens, Baker Mayfield chose another receiver, and it fell incomplete. Let's look at some ways that he supports in the run game or coming downhill to make plays when he's lined up as a deep safety. Here's a little screen out to Najee Harris where Stevens is the guy who's able to fill the gap. He's an eraser from the standpoint of he will make tackles. 
tackles? Is he making tackles near the line of scrimmage when lined up as a safety? No. Normally when you see stuff like this happen, it's when he's lined up in the box already. I'm certainly not saying he's slow to react. He's very quick to react and come downhill and fill and make the tackle in the box here. I like Brandon Stevens' reactions, his reads. He's got a great motor, had 11 tackles or maybe 12 in this Colts game. You know, some of them are like this. He's lined up as a deep safety, and yeah, it's a big gain already, but Brandon Stevens is at least there to support when things break through on the second level. Clearly, if the Ravens were able to draft someone like a Derek Stingley or some crazy world Ahmad Gardner falls to the Ravens, then and in that situation, Brandon Stevens might not be a starter for this defense. But to use another basketball analogy, then he becomes a really good six-man. Great motor. Watch him all the way across the field here. Tracks the ball. Thrown to Jonathan Taylor. We have three missed tackles, and Brandon Stevens is the guy who makes the tackle some 32 yards away from him. All right, we know he's a good tackler. We know he plays downhill when need be. Let's look at him covering some stuff in zone. I feel like the further you move him away from the line of scrimmage, the less impact he has. Not that he's a bad player. I just think he's being very patient, especially early in the season. Interesting little sail fade concept by the Colts attacking him out of an empty set. And you can see that this receiver ends up wide open. This is the number two receivers lined up on the line of scrimmage. Ends up wide open. Now, Stevens had to hold in case the guy ran a post, so I understand that. But in any case, he's really out leveraged for what ends up being a, a pretty short throw into the boundary. I feel like Stevens could have played this better. It would also help if people were making contact with receivers and getting their hands on him at the second level. This is just too easy of a route with no physical contact on the number one receiver at all. Stevens seems to be directing people pre-snap. Gets off well in his back pedal. He's very smooth, great athlete if you ask me. But I would say early in the season in 2021, he was worried about getting beat deep sometimes, and sometimes was a little too patient. Wouldn't break on things at all, and whereby gave the receiver a two-way go. In this case, pretty easy fade reception that almost goes for a touchdown. All in all, he's really versatile. You can line him up anywhere and pretty much play any coverage. All right, against the Rams later on in the season, somewhat similar concept that the Rams run out of empty. The number two receiver, who's the point man this time, curls it up in between the hashes. He gets a little bit of help from Josh Bynes, who seems to be admonishing him post-snap. But in any case, Bynes fits underneath of this, allowing Stevens to stay over the top and stay pretty patient. Jimmy Smith also is maintaining good leverage. So this guy's not nearly as wide open if he was to run that post corner, but still there is some space there. I still think this is a good example and a good rep for Brandon Stevens of staying patient, staying square, having his right hip slightly open to where if that guy did run a post corner, he would be able to go ahead and open it and defend it better than he did in that Colts play. Now, in this schizophrenic Ravens defense that Wink Martindale coordinated last year, the very next snap, what are they running? They're running a zone blitz. Of course, we couldn't stay with something that was successful at all, so third down, we run a zone blitz. Stevens is asked to play a completely different technique after playing half field safety. He's asked to drop in the low hole and replace a blitzing inside linebacker, in this case Patrick Queen, and we open up the boundary side seam for an easy completion to a tight end. That's the thing that makes it a little difficult to evaluate a second year player like Brandon Stevens. He was asked to do so many things and when we had a successful rep on that second down that I showed you, we weren't really able to celebrate it during the season or now because the very next play we put Stevens in a different position gave up a first down. Alright, let's look at another good rep. He's playing like middle of the field free safety here. Another empty set by the Browns. He's going to help cover up a receiver who is starting to break open once Baker Mayfield extends this play. I think Brandon Stevens has really good pre-snap awareness and communication. Good to great in-game awareness. You can see he's taking away that deeper route, so Baker Mayfield's got to check this thing down to the sideline. It ends up being incomplete. I think it's going to really benefit Brandon Stevens having a guy like Marcus Williams around. He won't be asked to do this that often. However, in a pinch, Brandon Stevens is capable of playing middle of the field free safety, or if we wanted to switch things up and blitz Marcus Williams or have him play man on someone, he's got the ability to do these things. He's going to stay on top of routes and generally not give up the deeper route. This is an interesting concept that the Browns ran multiple times. You get a go by number one and a, and a deeper out by number two. They're attacking our corner. Our corner's getting off with number one and carrying him vertical. For whatever reason, we're not able to switch this thing off to the safety. One thing I noticed about Brandon Stevens in, in probably three or four reps that I got on film is he's not able to recognize, okay, I have no work on the other side of the field at all right now. No routes are developing, so I can go ahead and commit here, even though that, that number two receiver possibly was threatened in the middle of the field with a post. But in any case, the it's a, it's a really well-designed route concept, first of all. 
a, a well-thrown ball by the quarterback, an anticipation throw, because he sees the corner getting off with number one on the vertical route. Not fault in Brandon Stevens, to be honest with you. I think Marcus Williams is just a more classic free safety, and I do not think in 2022 that route combinations like that are going to be a big problem. Now let's look at one of the few plays last year where Brandon Stevens caught some controversy, and I don't think his name should have been mentioned at all. This is the 4th and 11 against the Bears. He's lined up in the box. We're bringing 8, cover 0, straight man-to-man. -man. This is where Chris Westry is going to get beat deep to give up the go-ahead touchdown for the Bears. Now obviously we came back and we won this football game. My point, and I made it then and I will continue to make it, is that Brandon Stevens did nothing wrong. He's assigned to guard this tight end here. And Andy Dalton recognizes that there could be an overload blitz. Well, there could be an overload blitz from either side. He moves the running back over. That doesn't change the coverage. All it does is change Chris Board is now going to line up outside of Brandon Stevens, and Board's going to take the running back man. Neither one of those guys goes out into a route. But in any case, Brandon Stevens is responsible for the tight end. So if the tight end goes out in a route, Brandon Stevens has to guard him. Simultaneous to that, if the tight end pass pros, which he does briefly on Odafe Owe, then Brandon Stevens is allowed to blitz. But saying that he got there late is just a stupid-ass statement. Because first, we hit the quarterback in the mouth with Odafe Owe, number one. Number two, he has to hold for a moment and hesitate and make sure that this is not a tight end screen, make sure there's not any other route developing, because there is no second level at all. Odafe Owe, there he is smacking the quarterback in the teeth, by the way. But there's no second level to this defense at all. There's eight guys in the picture here that you can see were all lined up there. There they are. And then there's three corners playing man-to-man -man on the three receivers that were out wide. They're off screen. There's no second level. Brandon Stevens just can't take off the instant he thinks he sees the tight end pass pro because if he does, there's no one behind him to, to prevent a big play because those three DBs were all playing man. Now, what makes this even more egregious, if you ask me, this is the play before or the snap before. This is fourth and six, and guess what happens? Brandon Stevens lined up at free safety. We're going to play man free is what we're going to play, and the Chicago Bears have a false start penalty. That's what created the 4th and 11. It was 4th and 6. So if we have, on 4th and 6, we have a middle of the field free safety that's able to help people. Why the hell do we have to go cover 0 when it's 4th and 11? It's nonsensical. There should be zero criticism of Brandon Safety for not blitzing, and there should be even less criticism of Chris Westry because his coach is the one who put him in that situation. Getting back to Brandon Stevens' specific in terms of technique, not a lot of passes defense, not an interception recorded last year. I think he had one quarterback hit. Uh, no real stats to mention other than uh, this forced fumble against Devontae Adams, which, you know, you could say Devontae Adams is out of bounds, and it, clearly he was he was determined to be out of bounds because this is not an official forced fumble for Brandon Stevens, and it is still a big gain for the Packers. That's the one thing about Stevens. A lot of his tackles, and I think he had 72 or maybe 74, were downfield after the offense was able to get a significant gain. In any case, here's the end zone angle, a little slip screen to Devontae Adams, and you'll see from this angle that Stevens is able to get his hand in there and strip the football. I would expect him to make more plays like this as he's able to play closer to the line of scrimmage this year in more of a nickel safety role because of the acquisition of Marcus Williams. You guys let me know what you think of Brandon Stevens and the film study breakdown I gave you. I tried to organize it into concepts or coverage techniques that he was asked to execute. I think we've got a pretty good football player, highly intelligent, great motor, really good tackler who can cover tight ends in space and be used in kind of that, that positionless defense that the NFL concepts call for on third and medium or third and long. Let me know what you think of the video and what you think of Brandon Stevens' potential in the comments section.